<laughs> Zach, do you have a an all time favorite moment that you just when you hear the audience are like, yes? I mean, I I always look forward to the turn. Um, I'm a big fan of Justin's measuring uh, sequence. <laughs> Um, and then, of course, when my name comes up at the end, I get a special little flutter. But uh, no, no, I, I, yeah, it's hard to pick my, my favorites. Yeah, I, I love that none of these characters I don't think I've ever seen a horror movie. They're just like, <laughs> I'm going to measure the square footage. I'm going to keep exploring. Well, I remember doing that and thinking, what, what is he going to do with all this footage? Why? why, why the And, it, and it, it's, he crafted, so he was all so deliberate. That's right, I questioned what, um, while we were shooting it, it was so. Um, I mean, he 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 makes it all work so per- well. It was so funny. So it's, uh, that was unexpectedly funny for me. Yeah, Let, let's back it all, all the way up. Where this idea began? When did it start for you, Zach? Um, I had read a book uh, called *The Gift of Fear* by a security consultant named Gavin De Becker, and there was a chapter in the book that is was was. Uh, well, it was encouraging women to pay attention to those like little, tiny, almost invisible red flags that men can throw up in day-to-day situations. And they were things that were seemingly innocuous, but they were they belied a much more sinister intent. So, for example, when a man compliments you uh, when you didn't ask for it, or touches you even in a non-sexual way when it's inappropriate, um, or injects, does you a favor that you didn't ask for. All, all of these are like little red flags, and he's saying, you know, society has has uh, encouraged women to ignore a lot of these red flags so that they don't seem difficult or so that they're not a bitch or something like that. And so I was reading this chapter and I just, I had this realization that like I I don't think about this ever at all in my life because I don't have to because I don't have to look at half the population as like a potential threat. Um, and so I didn't want to write a movie. I just wanted, you know, it was late at night one night at my in my garage, and I just started writing like a scene where I wanted to load as many of these uh, seemingly in- invisible red flags into one interaction. And so I thought of the idea of a double booked Airbnb as a place, you know, where I could I could do that. And so, um, you know, him touching her luggage, you know, making her tea she didn't want, all of these are saying pretty name, like that's not appropriate. And a lot of guys wouldn't notice that, but I think that more women would. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of play with with that theme with this. And then as I was going, I was just was enjoying myself and kind of I didn't know what was going to happen. And I was pretty sure he was a bad guy. And then, you know, I got them down into the into the bowels. And I was like, all right. So at some point he's got to do the thing that I am, you know, think he's probably going to do. And then I was like, fuck, I, I hate this. Like every if I know what's coming, the audience knows what's coming. And then I was just like, uh, and, uh, a giant naked lady comes out and smashes his head. And I was like, that's, oh, that's fun. Well, now I, fuck, now I like it, but it's over. Um, God You're damn. still in the bowels, though. Was that? Uh, you're still in the bowels. I'm which still is in the that. bowels, yeah. Um, and so then it was about exploring that theme of, like, um, sexual aggression and sexual threat uh, from the exact opposite angle. And so that's why I, I, I came with that character and um, who is just wreaking havoc and completely oblivious to the damage that he does. And, um, and I wanted them both to kind of pass through the same, I'm talking a lot, I wanted them both to pass through the same you know, moral test. Uh, and you know, she passes and he, and he fails. And right. Yeah, that's where it was. <laughs> so the, the first character we meet is Tess. Uh, Georgina, when you were reading the script for the first time, what, what was the moment where you were like, ah, I'm in? Um, I think from the get-go, I kind of was reading the script and thought this is a really well-written script. And then I think as, you know, when you watch it, you have that moment of when it moves and suddenly you're in AJ's world and you're with Justin. I remember reading that and being like, what the fuck is happening? Like, where am I? What's going on? And then I kept reading and reading and reading and it was just so well-written and it was so... Uh, interesting to read and I was gripped and I couldn't stop and that's usually you know when you're reading scripts if that's how you feel when you read it normally if nothing terrible happens that's how you should feel when you watch it definitely and and Justin for you I mean I, I'm speaking for everybody, but Hollywood sweetheart. Where was there any? <laughs> You're speaking for no one, um, <laughs> guys. You know, Justin. You're speaking for my mother. Uh, <laughs> was there any hesitation to kind of play this role where he's 
he's an asshole. No, the opposite. I really relish the the idea of doing something like that. And um, it was like Georgina said, so just so well. It was so gripping. Um, I, I I thought it was a romantic. It started. It starts as a romantic comedy, and so I thought I was reading it that way. So I, uh, I felt like, well, this is a really um, which is th- they're hard to write. They're hard. It's hard to write people liking each other, you know, um, and like meet cute sort of stuff. And so I thought, like, well, well that is so well written, um, and, and it works on that level. And then when the mother came out of the darkness, I just uh, I, 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 I I was blown away. You know, I wasn't expecting it at all, and. I was in a van. I was in a. I was driving a little camper van across the country, and I was reading it in. Um, I stopped at a, like a truck stop RV park. It's like polite to call it an RV park, um, and it was in in Louisiana, in the middle of Louisiana, and and so it was like the setting for a horror movie already. And I was reading it, and I was so conflicted because it it was so gripping and i and and i really wanted to know what happened next but it was also so scary and there were weird noises going on outside and 43 year old man was afraid to sleep in the (laughs) in a van and so um i put it down for the night but i was thinking about it all night i want to know how it ends i want to know what happens so i had to read it i had to finish it the next morning in the with the daylight yeah speaking of mother is is mother among us is my, oh, there, oh, there she shit. is. Matt. Take a oh, bow, stand sweetheart. up, take a bow. This is Matthew Davis, our mother. What a joy. What a joy to you see your to figure Matt? here in this room. Do you want, to, do you want him to come? Co- come, 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 Matt. Come, Matt. Yes. Come on down. Get him up here. here. What a guy. What a joy. Yes. Oh, thank you. Yes. yes. Look at the freak, everybody. <laughs> you never know who will show up. Would you like to? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Old I time saying. I missed right? you. <laughs> so how was uh, breastfeeding Justin Long? Just a dream. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I was gentle and tender. Uh, no, I didn't use a lot of teeth. You latched what, immediately, as what, I recall. Wh- there, there was a crazier scene that got that. Got, <laughs> should I not bring this up every no, time? No, 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 tell. No, to do <laughs> tell. <laughs> There was a more a scene that um, so after the breastfeeding, the breastfeeding scene, uh, the getting to know you scene, um, uh, you Matthew's character sees a uh, a rat. It's trying to it needs to feed me because I'm a I'm a baby and I need for, uh, nourishment. And a little rat is scurrying along, and I, and she grabs it kindly and bites the head off as you would, and, and masticates it, and then and like baby birds it into my mouth. <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> We had we had to lose it. We had to lose it. What was the uh, what was the mother makeup process, and and how long did it take? Uh, they got it down to three hours, and uh, yeah, it was a face piece and a boobs piece and a crotch piece. How did the, how did that feel? Uh, it felt felt great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it was weird walking around naked, but I got got used to it, and uh, it was strange. We all got used to it. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. I never got used to it. I never got. Used to it. Yeah, Georgina and Justin, like, I feel like it's cliche to be like, "What? What was it like on set? Where you, was it scary?" But like, when you're just sitting there in the mother costume, like, eating yeah, I crafty, mean, you managed is that to odd? kind of, uh, you know, put the two uh, apart, and obviously when we were filming, it was. You know, Matthew's amazing, and it was very scary, and like very much you're in it. But obviously, if he's eating a panini, then uh, it's just Matthew. <laughs> Great paninis in Bulgaria, by the way. It was hard. I was hard to separate. I I thought at first I might have to like do uh, some sort of methody thing and avoid Matthew and just kind of like because it was I had so much I had to be in so much fear of him. Uh, and he's such a nice person, as you can see. <laughs> but then it just got to be too complicated. And so we were, and Matthew was very sweet. He would, like, kind of take care of me while, and, you know, while he, we were doing these wild scenes, because there's a lot of, you know, they're intense scenes. But it, it was <laughs> so fun. So and he'd say, like, so at the end of these scenes where he's like, ah, he'd go, so are you okay? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing? <laughs> Well, I'm sure you all have some questions, so if you do, go ahead and put your hand up and uh, get to as many as possible. I see you two right here, so we'll do you in the glasses first and then next you. Yeah, I'm, I'm a giant horror fan, yeah. Um, 
I'm I'm interested in it. It's probably <laughs> not going to be exclusively all I'm 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 interested in, but I would be more than happy to do another horror movie soon. Yeah. Yeah, so the question is about the the location, the neighborhood, how did we do the different looks with it? Um so we actually filmed this in Bulgaria. Uh, and so that was a field that had a road um, a against a long one-story laboratory. Uh, and so we built 13 facades uh, on that field. And so I was actually very, very self-conscious because I don't know if anyone noticed, but like across the street from our hero house, we built these facades against the wall of the laboratory. And so in between the houses, you can like see that wall. And I was like, we're fucked. I mean, it looks like shit. Like it's, it's ruined the movie. And I don't think anybody's said anything to me about that. So it's fine. Um, and then we were able to, uh, you know, be very specific about what we would see in the 80s flashback and make those surfaces and those, you know, a lot of the, the grass is CG, but like pretty much everything else is like, you know, just rebuilt or like polished. Uh, and then when she's driving through Detroit and walking through Detroit, that's in Detroit. We went to Brightmoor and we filmed, we filmed that there. Going back to you being a horror fan, are there any horror influences that you feel are present in this film? Uh, I, I Audition, the Takashi Miike uh, movie was like a big, I'd say that's maybe the spiritual ancestor of this, um, uh, you know, Psycho with the with the unique sort of act structure, uh, it then dragged me to hell uh, with just like his his camera. Sam Raimi's camera movement is just like amazing, and so um, yeah, that. I, I said this to you outside of the Q and A for for Justin at the end when Mother's kind of taking your eyes out. It took me right back to that final shot of Jeepers Creepers, and yeah. I thought it was a reference, but he said it wasn't. I actually had not seen Jeepers Creepers. Uh, well. Oh, well, so Zachary. <coughs> the exit's there? I'll be here. Okay. Um, uh, had you but, but, but I saw it. I saw it after I cast you, but I just had Because I told him about it. And I was oh. like, I love Because when I called George Jeepers to tell her that you were in it, yeah, she's like, Jeepers Thanks, Creepers. Georgie. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll take some more questions. Straight back there. Yep, you. Uh, question for Georgina. Uh, how do you approach the acting uh, and sort of act two from the pit onward as, you know, uh, yeah, I think um, from the pit onwards, I guess I like I, I knew that was coming and the approach was just feeling <laughs> what it would be like to be in a pit for that long. And uh, everything was, you know, very well written. It was there. There was, there, you know, and, and then I just got to kind of play and, and hang out with Justin and it all came together well, I hope. What was that set like? Did you build like tunnels and Yeah, I mean they were amazing in Bulgaria, I have to say. Like the 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 house interior was on a stage. Uh the basement was on a stage, the tunnels were on a stage. You know, that 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 staircase that you looked down, that long one I mean, we that was a thirty meter uh staircase that we built. And so it was all very uh it was all practical, and when you turn the lights off, you know she was in total darkness. So it was it was very easy. I would I would uh, I don't want to speak for you, but it was easy to get into the zone of, of those scenes because it's yeah. it's it was scary in there. Yeah, it was really really scary and very dark and like very horrible. So it was yeah, it was very easy to get into. Yeah. Right here in the front. Uh, the question was once Keith had his head bashed in. What very disturbing to question body? in the front row. Wants to know how the body was disposed of in a way that, right? Is that what you're saying? If one were to do that, if one were to replicate that with maybe with a smaller animal, is that what you're saying? Okay. What would happen? What do you think happened to the body? Well, uh, you'd have to bury, build, build another tunnel. But by the time you got down there, yeah. I think they probably had a, I think they probably have a room where the bodies go in. I think mean, that's what most serial killers do. They have a place where they'll bury. And it'd been like you a couple of You clearly haven't been to a lot of dungeons, and that's okay. Lime. They buy a lot of lime from Costco, you know, to bury the bodies. Really good digging system. She, mother could probably, was probably a hell of a digger. I don't want to speak for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? That's, it's, it's a good question. What it's a great question. Body? <laughs> yeah. Well, if you... It's been a couple of weeks, though. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. We went down there, so there's been time for cleanup. But you still want to know where. She's not satisfied. Acid, She's like, no. a vat of acid. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I have some more questions. Like, how many people did Mother kill? Like, how often is that Airbnb booked? Mm. Is that I, a routine I, that's why I think thing, or is she more, like, I think. opportunistic about it? Yeah. 
I'm not, not going to answer that. Okay, fair. That's fine. I see hands straight up in the air. We'll explore all of it in the sequel. <laughs> So, so Mother, uh, superhuman strength, I mean, she's pretty strong in a few of those scenes, and a little bit that Jason thinks she's dead, she's coming back. Any, any comments on that? For me, no. <laughs> oh, uh, you know, we trimmed some stuff, uh, which, was, which was, you know, the right thing to do. I, I didn't have any... Uh, any meddling, you know, whatsoever. So I, I'm. This is it. This is the director's cut. I'm happy with it. Um, some things had to go for time. There were some things that that I really loved that just, um, like for example, the rat scene. The only reason I had to go is because I just you don't want to see too much of the mother, you know, too soon. And so the more that we can kind of just keep her a mystery, the better. And you, there's no way to get around. She bites a rat. You're getting a good look at her. It's it is what it is. So that had to go. Uh, there's a couple of other scenes here and there that that were chopped, but. Um, it's it's all for the best, yeah. Awesome. Um, we'll go you in the red shirt, yeah. Um, I've like been a zombie in a commercial, and <laughs> I've you know been a, a a yeah a random creature in a like a Nickelodeon TV show or like the alien xenomorph in a sketch for Corden or that kind of thing. But all of those were like one day in the makeup and doing it and then getting out of it and you're like, I did that. And so the difference for doing my first creature feature is uh, <laughs> uh, is that I was like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna uh, sustain this kind of thing uh, for multiple days? And I mean, I was there for five weeks and only shot 12 days over five weeks, but it all led up to five days in a row at the end. And so I was like, okay, the, it's gonna have to, Will I be able to do it five days in a row? And, um, yeah. and I did. <laughs> one, one thing I noticed this time around that I, I did, that in the credits there are some names that I adore, some names I know. Are there some cameos that we should be looking out for or listening for? Oh, well, there's one. Uh, well, <laughs> Justin, take. Oh. <laughs> I saying no way. Oh, Zach, you have to do it. Wow. So I, well, now I feel bad. She said no way, but. Uh, the the lovely and talented Kate Bosworth is is uh, AJ's agent hey. on the phone. Yeah, Melissa Gilbride. Bad news. She's here. Cameo. And she did a great job. Um, I, who else? My my wife uh, Sarah Paxton is uh, makes a couple of voice things here. She's the voice of the TV, and she's uh, she's on the phone and a couple other spots. Those are the two I noticed. Okay. There yeah. We go. All right. <laughs> cool. I, I see one right there in the light. Yeah. When you saw there was a whole movie called Nope, where you like, they stole my line. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, so I'm actually friends with Jordan, and I I went to his house and showed him the movie a few months ago. And when that when we were done, I was like, so tell me, dude, like, is that scene where she says nope, like, is that is that gonna be a problem? And he was like, no, it's great, no, it's great. I was like, he said nope. Do you do that in your? Because I knew his movie was called Nope. I was like, do you do that? And he was like, he's like, I, I don't know if I don't want to tell tales out of school, but he basically was like, it's all good, man. Like, put it in. And then when I watched Nope, there is a very strong yeah. Nope moment. And I was like, well, God damn it, dude. But I, I like our moments. So I wouldn't have taken it out anyway, so it's all good. But uh, anyway, yeah. Right here. It was really hard to get this movie made. I, you know, I'm a first time director, um, not known for anything but comedy. Uh, everybody said no. It took me a year and a half of no, 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 no. I sent it to everyone I knew. I got no's. And then I got it to my buddies at Boulder Light, who are here. And they immediately, they got it. They said yes. Uh, they really championed me a lot. And then we got it to, to uh, Roy Lee, who's here in the room. And he, he really, you know, fought for me. And then, I was say we financed the movie independently, and it, our financier died uh, on the day of my going away party to go to Bulgaria to shoot the movie, and and they canceled like the movie was over, and uh, the miracle of miracles is that New Regency read the script like that day, and they got on Zoom with me that afternoon, and that that they greenlit the movie like they they saved us, they saved the movie. It was like amazing, and. Um, <laughs> And the best part is that uh, th they were total champions, and they didn't—they didn't fuck with the movie. They were just like, "You—you you got a thing. The train's moving. Like, let's not get in way in the way of the train." And it was—it um, 
It was a real miracle. Like, it really was a miracle. And, and oh, what's crazy is after they, they greenlit the movie, I called my Bulgarian line producer. I was like, we got the money. Like, we're back. And he was like, oh, I already fired everybody. I already let everybody go. I was like, oh, it was like the worst. But then he, he scrambled and we got, we got everybody. Uh, thank you so much for waving over there because I could not see. So, yeah. Um, I wanted to know, did you have any concerns about the meta aspect of the movie? There is a point at which uh, AJ is so horrible and she is so good that you've got either she survives and he dies or this is going to be a really annoying movie. <laughs> um, are, are, do you, did you have any concerns about people sort of going, okay, it's either got to end this way or I'm annoyed? No, I, I just don't think that way. So I no. Um, I, I wish I had a more compelling, interesting answer, but I just didn't, I, it didn't. I kind of just I wanted to write an ending that would satisfy me, and so that's what it is. And I was just I just let that be my north star, and I I didn't think about it really. So that was always always your ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I knew that like he wasn't gonna survive and she was gonna die. I knew that was not on the on the table. Um, so yeah. If I can ask a second question, what happened to all of the other, um, because the gentleman who lives in the junkyard is saying, oh, there were all of these generations and that's not the worst thing living in that house. So what happened to all of the other things that he saw? He's, when he says she's not the worst thing in there, he's, I, I don't really like to get too deep into like what is actually going on in the movie, but I mean, he's. He's referring to Frank. Um, yeah. Beth? I mean, I always try and say, like, the, the movie that's advertised in the trailer is not the movie that you're going to see. And I don't know if that's true or not, but that's, that's what I say to people uh, to manipulate them to get their money. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. I, I, ju I just think if you say don't, the less is more. The less you know, the, the better going in. So you tell your friends and tell all of your friends. Tell acquaintances. Tell people you haven't spoken to in a long time. People who think it's weird that you're calling them. T 20 years I haven't spoken. <laughs> I saw someone waving. Right. Yep, go ahead. Great question. Let's let's start down here and then we'll, we'll get to Zach. <sighs> well, I... I, I I was confused by the title when I first read it. I no longer am, um, but I uh, it took it took a while. It took me a while, like sitting with it, even while we were shooting it. Um, but I always saw it as as uh, I I, ca I came to see it as I'm the I'm a bar I'm the barbarian, whoever is invade you know the invader, and it's I, I but it's about I think more um, the father Frank, uh, the idea of being invasive, and. Uh, um, you know, I take it to it, its extreme, as does the father. Uh, he's, but um, yeah, I always saw it as that that idea, someone invading another, oppressing somebody. All of us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All of you. Uh, well, I mean, my manager is here, and this year, as he's tried to pitch me for other creature features, he's been like, he plays the uh, titular role in Barbarian. Wow. And I was like, I think I play the tit titular <laughs> role, but not the titular role. I think when you see it, you'll see yeah, she's not the Barbarian. I don't think. Um, I didn't really think about it that much. It was <laughs> <laughs> it's the title of the movie. It was called Barbarian, and <laughs> um, I, but I like weirdly got attached to it, and there was talk of changing the name, and I was like, no, like I was kind of obsessed with it being called Barbarian. So now that it is, I'm happy. Yeah, you guys tell the real story. Well, I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> ditto, ditto what she said. Um, I mean, it's. Uh, I I had to save the document. Um, <laughs> I had to have a word to type to save it. Or it would be untitled screenplay two, um, so I wrote barbarian. I think I'd already written in my first kind of session like Barbary Street, uh, and I, I just it seemed okay to me. And then as I as I finished, I became attached to it, and it, it to me it feels it feels perfect. Um, I've had some really funny uh, observations on like the YouTube YouTube comments where some I saw one comment that was like, barbarian, that's really smart. That's really smart. The the address is four seven six Barbary Street. 
the year 476 is the year Rome fell to the barbarians. And I was like, is that, is that true? And I like looked, I was like, that is true. I did not know that, that's crazy. And then I saw like another comment that was like, barbarian, that's very smart, very smart. <laughs> barbarian is an angram of Airbnb. I was like, I didn't, I didn't think about that either. That's fucking scary to me now. I'm creeped out by myself. Uh, so I don't know. That is incredible. Yeah. Um, I'm so sorry, but we have to wrap it up. Okay. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you so much to Thank Collider Landmark Theaters, 20th Century Studios. Please tell your friends, go see Barbarian in theater September 9th. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>